Hi, it's Rob from RobNonPhoto.com with a quick video about doing macro or close-up photography on the cheap with your uh, Canon uh, EOS DSLR using a lens mount adapter and M42 lenses. Okay, so you've got your camera. Um, this is my 350D with just a standard 28 to uh, 80 kit lens on it. Um, yeah, great for taking photographs, landscapes, portraits, all that sort of stuff. But the problem is the minimum focusing distance. So the minimum fo focusing distance that you can actually take pictures of at is about one and a third foot. So you've got to be quite a long way away to uh, before you can take photographs of things. So that means you can't get in really, really close. And if, like me, you've come from using a bridge or a super zoom camera that has a macro function that can be a little bit disappointing because uh, taking close-ups of um, flowers and insects uh, is great fun. Now all is not lost though because then you think well I'll buy a macro lens and you look at the prices and think oh my gosh they're <laughs> well expensive, they're more expensive than my camera. Or you can also buy close-up lenses that, that go on the front but they're not, they're not that great um, really. So the other option is to use extension tubes. So what you could do is you could buy Canon or other makes of extension tubes. That will, What they do is they ex take your lens and you screw them onto there. Well, use the bayonet fitting if it was a Canon one. They move your lens out and they enable you to, clo to focus closer and enable you to take sort of macro shots of flowers and things. But the problem is they're pretty expensive too. I think it's about 80 quid for just one. Um, so the route that you might want to try out if you want to do it on the cheap is using M42 lenses and M42 extension tubes with an M42 to EF lens adapter. Okay, so first a little bit of history on M42 lenses. These are both M42 lenses. An M42 was a sort of standard used by a few manufacturers of cameras and lenses from like the 1950s to the 1980s. And instead of having a bayonet clunk fit, it has a screw fit. Um, everything else is manual, so you've got to, got to uh, got to focus manually. You've got to change the aperture ring manually, all that sort of stuff. But luckily enough, on Canon DSLRs, if you put them into aperture priority mode, they can handle having a manual lens on the front. But the first problem you've got to overcome is the fact that it's a screw thread on here, and we know that our Canon DSLRs are a bayonet fit. So let's put our EF lens to one side. So this is where you go on eBay and you buy one of these babies. This is a Canon, sorry this is not a Canon, this is a EF mount to M42 adapter. So it's got a bayonet fit in there and it's got a screw mount in there. And all we do is we take our camera and our lens adapter, our mount adapter sorry, it just goes on like so and then snaps into place like that. So now my Canon 350D can take M42 lenses. Now first thing I want to do if I'm doing macro or close-up photography is I need to put my extension tubes on. Now extension tubes again you can pick them oh and the main reason for using M42 lenses and extension tubes is they're incredibly cheap. You can pick up an adapter for two three bucks ten bucks maximum on ebay and then you find these at second hand sales thrift stores find them on ebay um, and you tend to buy them sort of in a tube with lots of them and then you can take them apart and use however many you want and basically the more you put on the closer you'll get to your subject however the more you put on the narrower your depth of feed fi the depth of field will be so you'll only have a tiny little bit of a thing in focus and also you lose a lot of light so as, if you use all of them you'll be really close into your subject but the problem is that there's not much light so your shutter speed could be very low so you need to use flash or a tripod um, or with a moving subject it's going to be very difficult and your depth of field is going to be very very tiny so if you were say taking a photograph of you know this lens here say the um you see the sort of distance markings there. You'd only sort of get that red line in focus and everything before and everything after would be blurred. So that can be a bit of a problem, especially with moving subjects. So what I tend to do is just use like a few of them like that. Um, they have like this lever mechanism that helps to operate the, the aperture control if you want to use it. But then that then just screws onto there and then I take my lens. Now the two main lenses I use when I'm going out and shooting 
um, macro are 135mm f2.8 fixed focus prime lens and 90 to 230 zoom. You can use extension tubes with any lenses, just bear in mind that the longer the focal length, so the bigger the lens, the, the, the further away you're going to be able to stand from your subject. So if you're photographing things like bees or wasps, that might be good. But the problem is the uh, the tighter your depth of field, okay? Um, and so you know you can use them down to like a 50 or 30, 35 or 29 mil um, lens, but then you, you, your subjects could be right up against the thing. What I would say is because they're so cheap, get them and play around and see what works for you. And what tends to work for me is this: if I'm working on a tripod. I'll use this big zoom 90 to 230 and the reason for that is that when you're focusing with your uh, M42 lens with your extension tubes and your adapter you don't focus really using the focus like that that will make a tiny little bit difference but not much the way you focus is actually by moving the camera backwards and forwards but with a zoom lens what you can do is you can actually turn the zoom ring and that will focus for you so if I'm on a tripod where I don't really want to be trying to shuffle the tripod backwards sort of a couple of millimeters each time what I'll then do is I'll use this uh, use this zoom and as you can see it's got a tripod mount on the bottom so I'll stick it on a tripod so it'll be nice and solid and then I can move it backwards and forwards if I'm going to be hand holding I'll use this 135mm 2.8 because it's got a nice wide aperture and it still allows me to stand off quite a way. But again, what you've got to do is you've just got to play around and see what works for you. I've done macros with 50mm lenses and I've done macros with 200mm lenses. Um, so it's whatever whatever works for you. So there we go. So there's the setup. And then because I'm handheld, say I'm taking a picture of a spider or something, I'll be just sort of moving the camera backwards and forwards. And what the way I do it is I set the aperture to f2.8 focus and then carefully slide it up to like f11 and then take the picture then by tightening up the aperture what's happening is I'm expanding the depth of field so more of my subject is going to be in focus because especially when you're taking pictures of things like spiders or insects you really want the, the eyes in focus um, but it's nice to have some more of the body as well so you need to tighten up the aperture the other thing I must always do is when I'm shooting is I will always especially insects I'll have the flash on and I'll be popping away with a flash because the problem you have is that w when you put the extension tubes on you, you're cutting down the light so your camera will use a, a, a shutter speed that's too slow to capture sort of any movement or say things with like spiders again that are on spiders webs they might well be going backwards and forwards a little bit so you really need to avoid that blur and I tend to find the, you know, the on camera flash isn't too bad with, uh, with that sort of subject um, and that can work very nice indeed. I mean the alternative is pumping up your ISO but you might end up with a little more grainy photographs. Um, so as you can see uh, that works very well and this whole setup down that lens was probably five pounds the extension tubes were, were a couple of quid and uh, you'll see a little slideshow at the end of the, the video and uh, you know they're not bad at all. The other thing I'd like to mention as well is say when I'm working with the long lens on subjects that aren't moving like flowers or plants another great way thing you can do is rather than using the on-camera flash which is a bit harsh on on flowers you can do a little bit of light painting so all you do is you set your camera up on your tripod put it in front of your flower bring the flower inside um, tighten up your aperture get all your focus rub lovely so it's um, nice and tight then all you need to do is let's say I was doing a macro shot of that lens cap a bit boring but you take your torch and then, then trigger the the shutter normally by using the shutter delay button or a remote and then because the aperture the uh, exposure might be sort of two or three seconds or even longer you know it could be sort of 10 15 seconds you can shine your torch on on your subject and what, what that will then do is give give you a nice soft light um, that looks like it was taken with a soft box but wasn't really all around uh, the thing you're taking a photograph of right so, so there we go so macro photography on the cheap for Canon DSLRs it does work on lots of other DSLRs as well just do a quick search on the net again all you need some M42 lenses some extension tubes, a lens mount adapter um, and a bit of time, a bit of imagination and you can come up with some great photographs. Right, that's Rob from robnonphoto.com. Thanks for watching.